you can use RFID writers to change the contents of the RFID tag in your Kyber Crystal. I've even done a video about it. Uh, but what I want to do real quick is go over the different writers that I have access to and what works and what doesn't work. Just explicitly tell you what works and what doesn't work. So let's start with this guy here. This is the uh, just a generic uh, RFID cloner. It doesn't let you type in a user, uh, uh, an ID or anything. Uh, you need to take an existing Kyber Crystal hold it up to it, click read, it'll read the, that kyber crystal, then bring in another one, hit write, and it'll write to it. Uh, one caveat, though, is that this thing will put a password on your kyber crystal. Don't know what the password is? The only way to take that password off is to blank the crystal, meaning turn this thing on, don't hit any of these buttons first, put the crystal up, hit write. What it does is it blanks the crystal, it erases the contents of it. Then you need to go and get another RFID uh, writer to put the code that you want back onto it. Then there's this thing that I picked up, and uh, yeah, it just doesn't work with the, the IDs, the RFID tags that are in Kyber Crystals, so just stay away from this completely. I would also say stay away from this, but at least you have a way to reclaim your crystal if, you get, uh, if it gets locked. Uh, the one that I use the most is this thing here. This is a little handheld writer and it'll let you uh, it'll read crystals, it'll write crystals, you can then rewrite crystals. It works pretty well. The only uh, side effect here uh, is uh, if you look in the data sheet here for the particular type of crystal, uh, RFID tag in the crystal, it's uh, an EM4305. Um, I'm looking at the configuration word section here, and if you see configuration bit 18 here has this flag called read login. That's disabled by default, but it gets enabled when you write to your Kyber Crystal with this particular writer. What that means is it requires a password if you want to read any of the other, if you want to read all of the information off of the crystal. Uh, it doesn't set the password, it just Sets, it enables this flag, so you have to provide a password. The password by default is all zeros, and this thing is sending all zeros as a password, so it works fine. You can keep writing and rewriting to your crystal. The only problem is other RFID writers may no longer work with their, uh, your, your Kyber crystal because they don't know that they need to do this login operation. But if, it, but if this is the only RFID writer you have, you're fine. They'll still work with uh, the holocrons and the lightsabers. This is the way to go. So run out and buy one of these. Except, there's this one. This one doesn't work. They look exactly the same. The, the strap here, I took mine off. Um, this comes from a person who commented on a previous YouTube video who was having problems. They couldn't, they wrote to their crystal once and then they couldn't change it uh, afterwards, and they couldn't read it with you, this uh, uh, RFID writer. And they were generous enough to send it to me so I could take a look at it and figure out what's going on. And the, the simple answer is they're made by two different companies. They look the same, but they're completely different. The firmware in this one is bad. It doesn't play well with the type of tag in the Kyber Crystals. This one plays fine. I'll turn them both on so you can get a look. Obo hands or OBO hands. You want to stay from away from anything that has that that uh, symbol, or that has that uh, brand name associated with it. Um, this, as you saw when it started up, was Zonson. All right. So again, now you can look at this and you can see kind of the the display. The disclaimer is completely different. I'll start this up again so you can see the disclaimers or pages look different. And you can see that the, the screens are different. This has a blue background, this has a red background. Um, another way to look at it is if I start typing in numbers. Please enter the card number. I'm going to do zero, or I'll just do one, one two, two, three, three four, five. You notice this red one has all the zeros. This one does not show all zeros. So this is, these are some uh, hints here that either if you've got a bad one or a good one. Um, but we can go a little bit further now because I've investigated what this bad one does. And what it's doing, it's doing two things. One, it has a bug. It cannot read uh, EM4305 tags, the kind of RFID tag that's in the Kyber Crystals. It has a bug in the code. And 
probably they never tested it because they never had this particular type of tag when they were writing the code for it. But I'll show you an example with a good one. This one can read it fine. No problem. No matter where you position it on the back, and typically it needs to be up here because the antenna is up here on this writer. On this writer, on the good one, the antenna is right here in the middle, so you want to put your crystal right up there. So on this one, it cannot read Kyber Crystal tags, but it can write to them once. And why is that? If we go back to this little piece of data sheet that I printed out, you will see here we have our read login, a couple down to bit 20 here, and there's a write login option too. What this means is that if you want to write data to the, uh, the RFID tag, you need to provide a password. That's separate from the read login option, meaning the read login can be set, so you uh, need a password to read everything off of the chip. But with write login not enabled, you could then go and write to the chip without needing a password. So you could turn this off later if you wanted to, you're okay. You can still write to that chip without needing the password. This other one, this oboe hands one, remember, this is the bad one. Look for something like this. All right, this is also enabling the write login flag, meaning it wants a password to write to the chip as well. It's not gonna change the password, it's not going to lock them with a password. It's just going to enable that flag. The problem then is that when you write to your Kyber crystal with either of these, uh, you they don't know, either of these RFID writers, they don't know to send a password with the write command. So writing will fail after the first attempt. The first time you write to your Kyber crystal with the bad one, this flag is not enabled. It'll write just fine. The second time and every other time afterwards, it'll fail because this thing doesn't know to send a password. And the same with the good one. The good one doesn't know to send a password, so it, your, your Kyber Crystal will not work with either of these after you've written to it once with this bad RFID writer. Okay, so how do you fix it? Well, that's a big to-do. Uh, long story, or the short, long story short is there's another RFID writer out there called a Proxmark. This is a Proxmark 3 Easy. It's actually a clone. Bought it off of eBay for like 70 bucks. And it's this thing that you just hook up and connect to your computer over a USB cable. You put your crystal on it and it has a bunch of commands to read individual uh, uh, bits of information and write to different types of uh, RFID tags including the EM4305 that is in the Kyber crystal. And with this, I was able to clear these two flags and reset the chip back to uh, its, I guess what we'll call factory state. But the only way I've found to do this so far is using a Proxmark. There's, I haven't found any other handheld RFID tag that's comprehensive enough to include setting these individual flags. So in the end, long story short, if you're going to buy an RFID writer, you want to get one that says Zonson on it. One that has screenshots that look like this with a disclaimer with a red background and white text behind the disclaimer text. One that has a red background in this uh, in the, the, the screen where you input your card number or you read the card uh, the tag number. You want to avoid ones that say Obo hands on them. You want to avoid ones that have a blue background on them. So look at the screenshots and take a close look uh, for anything that looks like the bad one and avoid it. Uh, ultimately though you're kind of stuck. It, it's it's luck. Good luck. Because these riders they're being bought from um, typically over through eBay or AliExpress or even through Amazon but they're actually coming from uh, Chinese sellers who they're using stock pictures, and uh, you might 
see pictures of something that looks like the good one and wind up getting something that is the bad one. It's very frustrating, which is why I would say if you're really looking to screw around with your RFID tags and your kyber crystals, you probably want to look at getting a Proxmark. These are more difficult to set up. You've got to install software on your computer. You've got to rewrite the firmware that it probably comes with. There's a big to do and, and it requires a lot of research to get this thing up and running. But ultimately this is by far the better device. But it's also more expensive. Or you take a shot, you buy one of these that you see online and you just hope that you get the good one and not the bad one. But at least now you'll know if you've got the bad one by turning it on and looking at the screen, looking at the background color, and if it's wrong, if it's blue, if it's got the, the blue background, or if it said oboe hands at the startup screen, at least now you know this one isn't good. Don't even bother using it with one of your kyber crystals. All right, so I hope that will provide some help to people out there who want to alter the uh, RFID tags in their kyber crystals. Uh, good luck. Stay away from the bad one.